Hello Wastelanders, Vlad here. Today I want to teach you how to make a countdown timer, which you may have seen in my recent short little silent film that I made in Fallout 76 titled The Heist. And uh, without further ado, let's jump in and let me show you what's going on. <music> So we're here in front of the West Virginia Bank Company, which was part of the set for my short film called The Heist. And when he got into this vault area, which I have removed all the walls, he pulled the switch. The countdown timer started on the light boxes. And when you got to the end, it set off a whole bunch of flamethrowers, thus burning our would-be assailant. So uh, this is everything that makes that countdown work. And I'm going to show you how to do it not only how to do it, but help you understand the concept that makes it all work. So you can do something similar yourself uh, or recreate this exact thing inside your camp. But here's you a preview of what you get at the end. All right, so that's pretty much the countdown. Now let's talk a little bit about power management and then we'll move into building this ourselves. Before we jump into building the timer, I thought it best that I talk to you a little bit about the concept we're going to use to uh, make this work. And it has to do with power management and how the game manages what gets power and what doesn't inside of a circuit. And I didn't come up with this on my own. I got it from Kieran, who's another YouTuber, and I'll link to the video he talks uh, in depth about power management. But we're just going to do a crash course right here and right now. So I've got a little bit of setup. I've got six light bulbs. These light bulbs require one power a piece. It is not like a normal light bulb where it just has to be kind of in the area. Let me see if I can find that in the build menu. This, uh, all right, so these lights here, uh, they just require themselves to be in the vicinity of a power source. These lights here have a number above them, so they require that amount of power going to them to work and uh, basically they are deducting from the total amount of power in the circuit. So this generator produces three power. We're only going to be able to get three of these lights to work at one time. So uh, let's just take a line to this one and we're going to take a line to this one. Uh, there we go. So they're both lighting up and then if I attach this wire here I still have all three lighting up, but if I light up this this one over here, notice that one went out. Why? Uh, there's a few reasons why. First, the system uses the priority based off which wire you attach first. However, before it takes that logic, it looks at how many steps away from the power the item using the power is from the generator. Let me explain. This is the generator. On this side, it goes from generator to power power line to the light bulb. It takes two steps. On this side, it goes from power generator to the first pylon, then the second pylon, and then to the lights. That's three steps. So when I added the third light over here, which was two steps away, it took the power away from the one over here, which was three steps away. That makes sense. Now, to talk, show you about the um, the order of lights, I'll move this one over here and I'll connect it. So these are the same distance away from the generator, but I connected this one last. I did these three, and then I connected that one. So this one's the one it chose not to give power to. So that's the basic concepts of the circuits and how power is determined where it goes. Um, so let's uh, let's just hook up all of the lights and let me show you the final thing we're going to do to manage this and make our lights change. So right now we have all lights attached. Uh, these are getting the power because they're two steps away from the generator and these are not because they are three steps away from the generator. All the power is spoken up by use these three lights. There's only three and so these, these are the odd people out. Now we can change that if we just use our trusty flamethrower. If we destroy this power pylon 
and in the processor wall. Uh, let's go ahead and repair that. Notice these are now getting the power. Why? It's because we destroy this power pylon, which as you can tell, all the wires disappeared as well. So it destroyed that circuit. So now there's nothing over here that it thinks is attached and is giving the power to these three over here. But if I were to repair this and restore that part of the circuit, these now get the priority because of the logic we already described. That being said, let's jump into building our countdown timer. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up our lights for the light boxes. And uh, what we're gonna use is a total of one, two, three, four, five generators for a grand total of 15 power going into the circuit. And that is because our grid for these lights is going to be 15 lights. Um, and I'm gonna balance them on this rug so it's going to be three by five. So three wide, five high. And uh, these things can be a little bit jumpy. They can go places you don't really want them to. See, I want it to go there in the middle. It wanted to go anywhere but there. So it's sometimes just simpler to go from the bottom to the top. Uh, but they will be a bit of a pain to stack perfectly. Anyway. There we go. We have our 53 by five grid. Let's make sure that, yeah, yep, they all move when I get this rug. Now I don't want these to be sitting on the floor. I kind of want them to be in the middle of my wall. So we're going to use our camp unit for that. Place the rug here. Notice that the rug dropped, but the light stayed in place, thus floating the lights each time a little bit higher. That's probably high enough, but let's put it down here just so we get a reference. All right, yeah, that's perfect. And then I'm going to put these going through a wall because I don't want you to see all the wiring. So to do that, I'm going to grab myself a regular old wooden wall. Uh, there it is, wooden wall. And I'm gonna put it with the wallpaper side facing out. Perfect. And then flamethrower it. And I chose the wooden one because when you flamethrower the wooden wall, the entire middle goes away instead of having a bunch of framing in there. And then we're just going to grab our rug, bring it over here, and kind of stick it going through here. Now the trick is that you want these lights to be perpendicular or parallel to the wall. Uh, yeah, parallel is the right word. Uh, so let's do that. And we want it centered. I think it just needs to move over a little bit and we'll have it. There we go. I think that looks good, but just to be sure, let's repair the wall. Nothing is odd. And we've got enough of these points sticking out that we can attach wires, no problem. You can tell that it's not perfect because some of these stick out a little bit more than others, but we're good to go. So now we can move to the next step of this, which is going to be setting up our initial wiring uh, for our switch to set the start countdown starting. So our next step in all of this is going to be setting up a little bit of pre-power prep and because we want to put a switch in this. So I'm going to need a wall decor. And uh, what we want is you can use a picture frame. Uh, for this, but I want to use the diploma frame. Uh, that do there it is, Vault Tech diploma frame, and then I'll need to grab a power switch. Do, 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 do. Power connectors. There we go. Power switch. All right, I'm going to take this to our generators. I actually don't want it to be that high, um, so actually going to take it somewhere more in the middle. Perfect. And then I'm going to go from my switch to this power pylon and then move this power pylon a little bit closer to this side where our power is. Now what I want to do is put this switch on the other side of the wall. We're going to use 
a little bit of an editing switch. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and place the wallpaper on this, which uh, I forgot to do in the beginning. So let's redo what we did there. I'll place this down. All right, because if you don't remember, uh, putting on wallpaper removes anything attached uh, to the wall. So do your wallpaper first. It doesn't even matter if you like the one you choose. Uh, at least it's there. You can change it without everything disappearing. So here we go. I got our circuit reconnected, but I want to get this switch over on this side of the wall. So we're going to just kind of take it now that it's been uh, with the wires connected and just move it a little bit and that's going to allow us to then move to this side of the wall without breaking the circuit notice these wires are still intact when we do that so now we have wires going from our generator to the switch to this power pylon and this is going to be our conduit that we go back to uh, for wiring each one of these letters uh, this is our starting point for each one now before I start wiring this whole thing up, let me show you this. The sun is coming over this wall here and hitting these lights. And because of that, I'm never going to be able to tell which ones are lit up and which ones are not. So if you're building this, even if you wanted to display it outside, build yourself a roof to create some shadow so you can clearly see which ones are lighting up and which ones are not. That way you don't get to the end and you end up with uh, some gibberish going on because you connected wires somewhere in the mix uh, that shouldn't have been connected. So make sure you can clearly see which ones are lighting up as we do the next steps. And we're going to move into building the first circuit at this time. Okay, so our first circuit, what we're going to need is a power connector. And we're going to place that on a rug that I placed kind of behind the wall. That gives us a direct shot to all of these conduits sticking out. And we're doing a countdown timer, so I need to start with priority. And that means I'm going to start with the number 5, because it's the first number I want to display. And then I'm going to take it out of the mix to display the 4. So I'm starting with the number 5. And so to make a number 5, I need to make the number 2. Uh, since I'm in working in mirror back here. Working without the rectangle, I may end up jumping more than I want to at different points in this. Okay, let's see if we made the number two or the number five. Okay, we made the number five, which is what we wanted to do. Uh, but notice I have 15 lights. I have 15 power. I need to account for these four lights that are not getting power or else it's gonna send that power someplace else as we connect more items. So how do I account for this? Well, I'm going to go over here, find my lights and I'm gonna make some extra lights over here to the side. And I'm going to make about, I think I just need six, but I'm going to make seven just to be on the safe side. Uh, make sure I have them all. So I have four lights that are not lit up. I need to connect those four lights to my power or four, four of these uh, sacrificial lights to my circuit as well. It does not matter, obviously, which four lights you choose. You just need to make sure four are accounted for. So now I have four. I have my five lit up, and I've accounted for all 15 power into the circuit at this point in time. So uh, how do I get this out of the way so I can move on to the next one? Well, we grab the rug, slightly move it. I'm going to move it a couple times just for good measure. And now... Uh, we are free. We can move this light anywhere we want in the camp, and these wires will follow. So notice uh, I've made that move. All my wires are still attached. And uh, our next step is to grab our trusty flamethrower. 
and I want to aim this to where it is going to hit that circuit when we launch it off and uh, I will connect it to this one here. I'm going to connect each one of these flamethrowers to the conduit that I want it to break. Why? Because when I do that, it'll effectively turn it off. It will no longer be getting power, which means I get to save on building materials because this doesn't break immediately when I run it every single time. So let's go ahead and attach that. It's going to destroy it. And notice all of our power went out. And now we're ready to build our number four. So I'm going to grab this rug. And we're just going to follow the same recipe. But instead of making a five, we're going to make a number four. The only difference is I'm going to use two power conduits this time. So from this one to that one, from that one to this one. And now everything for my number four is going to, oh no. Everything for my number four is going to attach to this power pylon. So each time we go to a new number, we're gonna add an extra power pylon into the mix so that we're getting this distribution of power going where we want at the end. It's all about the power priority. So that is not a number four. We went to the wrong side. Let's correct that. All right, so we got the number four. I have one, two, three, four, five, six lights that are not lit up. Therefore, I need to take six of these lights and that are our sacrificial ones. I need to move them into the circuit. All right. Four, and we got our six empty ones, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six lit up here. So now we're good to move this one out of the way and move on to the number three. Again, we're going to Move this just a little bit so it doesn't break the wires. And then bring it over here. Now when you put this over here, put it to where the one with all the wires attached, the, the whole bouquet of wires, so to speak, is facing the front. And that's the one you want to attach your flamethrower to. Uh, so let's get our flamethrower out. And just so you know, this ability to free move around the power only works in the current play session. If I were to log out and log back in and then try and move this rug, it would break every single wire attached to it. Um, unless I moved it to some place the game thought was uh, where none of those wires were compromised by going through another object, that sort of thing. And then what I'm doing here is kind of lining these up to where they there's space between them, but they're not taking up a ton of room. Uh, the main reason is because I don't, the more room you take up with building this, the more you have to hide from people visiting the camp if you don't want them to see all your wires. So obviously the less space you take up, uh, the less stuff you have to hide uh, or area that you have to hide with some walls or something. So anyway, let's tech that on there should get destroyed and now we're ready to move on to the number three but i think you see what is happening here uh, and we're going to follow the same pattern all the way through okay so let's move on to the number three and you're probably catching on to how we're doing all of this so you may not need to watch every single letter but in case you're wondering uh, it's all going to be here for you to come back and reference uh, but if you get the concept, then you could just move on to the end. I'm going to put some chapters. And uh, what I will do is show you some issues maybe towards the end that uh, are commonly encountered 
that you may want to try and avoid as you put all this together because you're putting wires in a lot of different places and uh, you can get uh, interrupted as you go along you could do all kinds of different things that would impact your ability to um, finish this without any mistakes and so knowing which ones to watch out for is a good thing so if you uh, skip along instead of watching me wire up all of these numbers then uh, okay so that one needs to go then you'll have something to come back and reference uh, just know that that's going to be available to you towards the end of the video but, um, so don't yeah basically what I'm saying is don't skip that part All right, so I think I got the number three here. Number three, I got four that aren't lit up, so I need four sacrificial lights attached to this third conduit. Three, four, five, and number four. Four, then my three. Let's move this over out of the way. All our wires are still intact, good. And we need our flamethrower, so that is somewhere around here, there you go. Now just be careful also <laughs> that you don't put your flamethrowers to where they're gonna destroy the other flamethrower with their fire. So there is a point where you're too close, is what I'm trying to say. But these should be spaced out just fine. Attach that wire. And we're ready to go to the next one. All right, so now we're getting on to, uh, we got five, four, three, we need to make the number two. And for that, I have these two rugs stacked on each other because we're gonna use the same concept, but these are starting to take up a lot of space on our one rug. So I'm giving myself a little bit of extra surface area. Do, 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 do. Power conduits, this is what I'm looking for. Here we go, we got one, two, three, and number four. All right, because this one had three, this one we're doing four. And uh, this is this is time consuming. I can understand that. Uh, someone may ask me why I only did uh, a countdown from five. Uh, that's because one, this, again, this is time consuming, but also two, this does take up a decent amount of budget as you put things together. So it the least amount of wires uh, you can do but still get the animation you want out of the light bulbs is uh, preferred. I'll need to make the number five on the back side so that it displays as a two on the front side. That should, if you remember that should save you from wiring it the wrong direction. Okay, let's take a look. All right, we got a two. We need to get four sacrificial lights into this circuit. And these are very important. And if you get to going pretty fast, uh, just trying to get it done, you may forget to attach these. So just keep that in mind as you go along. These are very important to making sure the right thing displays. All right, so two, and then we got our four lights there. We're ready to move this out of the way. Now, here's where you could go wrong. This rug is stacked on top of this rug. If I were to pick this one up and move it, 
there's a good chance it's going to break the wires that are attached. So make sure you're picking up the rug that is on the bottom of the stack. Do not pick up the one on top of the stack. If you accidentally do and you move it before you realize that's what happened, you're going to need to double check all of your wires and make sure that they didn't break. So let's move this over here. All right, I got this turned backwards. Let's fix that. Looking good. Now I need another flamethrower. That's not aimed right. There we go. Two. All right, everything looks good. Connect this thing. All right, we're getting down to the the last few things. We just got to get a number one, and we have to then make them all display for the last one. So that had four conduits. Now we need to do five. One. So yeah. These, these at the end, you start to really like have to wedge them in if you don't want to take up a lot of space. One, two, three, four, and number five. And just uh, again, pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure wires connect to the next pylon over and don't skip one. Make sure that you start wiring your number from the last pylon in the circuit you're working on instead of um, something different because then you change where the power priority is. Let's see if I did that right. Oh, I did. Look at that. Now, this one takes, I think, the most lights. I, need, I got seven that are not lit up. Good thing I put down seven. You'd think I did this before. That was my brain telling me, hey, no, you're wrong. You don't need six. You need seven. So I need to connect all seven of these sacrificial lights to finish taking up all 15 of our power. Now I'm getting excited. We're getting on the home stretch. I can feel it. Just got to make sure I don't screw up before then. All right, all those are lit up. It says the number one. Now we need to get these out of the way. Again, make sure you're grabbing the rug on the bottom, not the one that's stacked on top of the other rug if you're doing the same technique I'm using here. Let's get these over here. Oh. I flipped that in the wrong way again. Boom. Uh, Flamethrower. <clears throat> so lots of repetition with this one. Boom, boom. There we go. That should hit all of them. Let's give it a go. Ha! All right, we're down to the last circuit. We need to make the, we're gonna make all of them light up at the end instead of uh, doing the number zero. You could do anything you want. Maybe you could make an asterisk, question mark, uh, whatever fits your uh, preference when you get down to the last one. Uh, to do power conduits. So the last one had five. This time I'm gonna go with Six. Um, that's five. I need one more. 
Let's make sure I can grab this rug without a problem. All right, yep, we're good. Okay, so let's wire these things up. Okay, so I want all these to go. So I don't need any of my sacrificial lights this time because I want everything to go to the wall panel. That, that doesn't get old at all. So close. Four more. Three. Two. Oh, we're down to one more. Aha! All there. Let's make sure they're all lit up. Perfect. Now, I decided to keep these where they were. There's no reason for me to really move them. But I gave myself the option by placing them on this rug so that if you did want to move them someplace else, you could do the same trick and then get them moved. Um, but for me, they can all stay there. Now, um, we've got everything put in place. Before you repair everything, which will then start all of this chain of events that are going to happen, um, turn off your switch, therefore preventing the chain of events from destroying everything <laughs> uh, before you get to see all your pretty lights and the efforts of your work. So let's repair it all. Um, there we go. And uh, let's change this. Uh, let's, let's change this ugly wallpaper. Uh, I think with the stars, stars are gonna be nice. Okay. So we got our stars and we got a light. It's for time for our first test. And as long as you did everything correctly and you wired everything where it should be, you should get five, four, three, two, one, all lights, and then it stops. Let's try how this goes. Five, four, three, two, one. Success. All right, so we got it. Um, that worked out pretty well. And we can turn off this switch. And we're ready to repair everything. So now everything is pretty much set. You are good to go. You've got your countdown timer. You just need to decide, do I want it to do anything else after I made this timer? I decided in my build to do some flamethrowers that it would set off. And if you do that, if you make this trigger something else, like another set of flamethrowers, remember this was your end in conduit right here. This one that connected and went to every single light. So your flamethrowers that you want to go off at the end, uh, your traps, uh, your, uh, well, there's not much else you can make go. Uh, if you have additional lights you want to light up, whatever it may be, uh, make sure they connect to this last one. It is the last one in your circuit. So therefore, anything you want to happen after everything else happens should go to this very last one. Uh, but you can see why having these things destroyed as we went around instead of repairing them immediately was beneficial uh, because this is a mess of wiring and uh, having them out of the way because the pylon was destroyed as we moved to the next number was beneficial. Uh, now I mentioned I needed to tell you about a few things that could make this whole thing go haywire. And I did mention them as we went along, but here is a reminder in case you skipped parts of the video. Uh, number one, if you are wiring this, make sure that your fire uh, flamethrower connects to this one with all of your wires on it. If you were to mess up and connect the flamethrower to this one, then the flamethrower would start early. Uh, it would probably start uh, as soon as something else changed over here in the circuit, uh, thus throwing off the timing for your countdown. And if things are broken before the timer gets to them, then you can end up skipping a number. So keep that in mind. 
connect your flamethrower to the one with all the wires, not to one of the other two pylons in the back of the circuit. The other thing I want to mention is the rug thing. Remember to grab the rug. If you do this double rug stack, grab the one that is on the bottom. Grabbing the one on top and attempting to move it someplace is going to break the wires attached to it. And uh, that is not good. <laughs> that means you have to rewire things. You probably won't realize you accidentally did it until later. Uh, so just be judicial about how you pay attention when you're moving these rugs around. Grab the one that is at the bottom of the stack and not the one that's on the top of the stack. So another thing that can send the whole thing haywire is powering a conduit attached to a wall or a floor way too close to the circuit. I just, I got another generator. I've got free power with it. It's only going to this connector, but it is going to interfere in our lights. And let me show you. Now I got a nine, a whatever, an I. This is just all over the place. And it's all because of this conduit here getting power. Oh, screw it. All right. Now, if we repair everything and run it without that connected, you'll see that everything runs just fine. Oh, look, it's magic. It works again. So if you do this, be very careful of where you put other power in your camp. This circuit was not attached to any of these lights. It should not be powering any of them by the logic of the game. Yet somehow it magically is. I think it may have something to do with the fact that I threw these lights going through the wall. And it is somehow then allocating a few power um, that it shouldn't. Uh, that's my only explanation I can come up with why it does it. But uh, having it there throws it off. So if you do need power in other areas of the camp, then I suggest throwing them through the roof. Uh, or something of that nature, uh, using conduits, maybe uh, the, you know the the tube ones, the metal tube ones, instead of the ones that attach to the wall. Uh, that way, you don't have this power interference. And the last thing tip I have for you is, if you want to change the color of your lights, then don't sit there and change <laughs> each one individually. Go over to your appliances. Uh, no, not appliances. Your power connectors and grab the terminal. Attach it to the same circuit that you have all of the lights attached to. And then just go in here and under light box controls, you can set the color. And uh, it's just for good measure, let's just change these to uh, dim, dim blue. And now they're all changed to dim blue. Just remember, to take your computer out of the circuit before you start to run it, and uh, you'll be good to go. But that's the, uh, the gist of everything. That is your countdown timer. And now you can uh, run it whenever you feel like it. Just remember to re turn off your switch before you repair things, uh, or else you'll be spending a lot of circuitry, aluminum, and copper repairing all of this stuff. So that's going to do it for today's video, everybody. I hope that helps you out. Uh, you learned a little bit about power priority. If you don't want to make a timer yourself, then you learned something new about power, hopefully. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the latest content from Vlad Administrator Gaming. Until next time, I'll see you in the wasteland.